Welcome to the third installment of the 2017 season of What the Puck. I'm Michael Shore, along with Jason Rubin here. Uh, this is the pre-semifinals uh, show that we are doing, a little preview of the NHL playoffs. We wish we could do it every day because the NHL should, in fact, take over TYT Sports, but there's some people <laughs> that fight me on that. I'm still wearing my Rangers cap. Uh, proud of the Rangers. They did, I think they overachieved. I don't think they're as good as advertised. They have a great goalie and they don't have a lot of scoring from the defense, uh, but I think that they have some decent young players. Uh, I, I was impressed with how well they did. I didn't think they were going to go much like, further. Than I like your takes on the range, because you went to game six of the last King's Cup, which Correct. was against the Rangers. Which was against the Rangers. And your takeaway from that before going, I'll never forget this was, well, if they win, that's great. We go to game seven, we go back. But if they lose, I get to see the cup. Right. Well, it, it, was, it was fantastic. <laughs> I, I, also, I was with my son, who at that time right. was even younger than he is, is now. He a, is he a uh, Kings fan? He's a Rangers fan. He's, he's a Rangers fan. But it's tough because he plays. And where he plays, the Kings practice. So there's a part of him that kind of, I think, feels uh, like spot. I made him a Rangers fan and he would like to be a Kings fan. He would never admit that. Uh, but but yeah. it's good. But in any case, that night we were Rangers fans. He wore his Ranger jersey and his Rick Nash jersey. Um, Rick Nash didn't score enough, but he played pretty well right. in the playoffs right. this time and, and that time. Um, but anyway, we, so we have, uh, we have two interesting series. Uh, Nashville Predators, a really exciting team, um, and the yes. Anaheim Ducks, who had one of the most interesting series I've ever seen. I mean, they get that that comeback in Game Five, yes. where they were down. Uh, okay, no, I guess it was Game Four. They were down three goals with three and a half minutes left. They scored three goals with the goalie pulled. Mm -hmm. They tied it up, and then Corey Perry scored in double overtime to win it. I've never seen anything like that in hockey. It was thrilling. Uh, they went on to win. They were kind of the adults in the room. Edmonton, I feel like in two years, Edmonton will go on a dynasty-type streak. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, okay. I think they're that good. If Cam Talbot is good, which, you know, he played 73 of the 80 games in goal for Edmonton this year. If he is able to remain that good or get better, um, that team is just built to, to shine. And, if, of course, if they stay healthy. One of the things I love watching with any of the young players. Hockey and basketball are the only two sports, in my opinion, that one player could have such an enormous impact on changing the entire culture of their team. And, yeah. like, and go from two years ago, or even a year before Connor McDavid, and it wasn't right. even McDavid that played, uh, or I should say skated, as well as, and please again pronounce the guy's name for me. Uh, Leon Dreisaitl. Who was benefiting mm -hmm. off, like, I call it gravity. Yeah, of course. The gravity that you have to give attention to Connor McDavid, how much people pull to him. It, it, he had 77 points in the regular yeah. season, I believe it was. And he also was injured in his rookie campaign Correct. a little bit. So oh, a, a lot of it. A lot of it. So injury. they have this front line or this first line of, of skaters who are terrifying. But yeah. what I love so much about it is it's such a dramatic change because two years ago even I knew Edmonton would win. A cup in four years? No, no, it's years. unbelievable. And listen, they didn't. They lost. They right. lost uh, uh, to, uh, to um, Anaheim in a seventh game. But Anaheim is built for this year. They're built for next year or the year after. And I think uh, Todd McClellan, who coaches Edmonton, mm -hmm. has really changed the culture there. I was really impressed listening to him after losses, after wins, after the end of the series. Um, they had problems with the officiating, which they had a right to. That third goal that was scored with the goalie pulled that tied the game in game four um, was pretty questionable. It looked like uh, there was some holding going on by Ryan Kessler, Kessler mm -hmm. of Cam Talbot. In any case, I think they're there for the future. But today, it's Nashville. And Nashville <laughs> is a really interesting team. Pekka Rene is, I think, the best goalie left in the playoffs right now. They play such an overpowering defense, and they get scoring from their defense. Roman mm -hmm. Yossi uh, and, and P.K. Subban, who didn't score that much, but in the same kind of gravity way that Jason was talking about, mm -hmm. he takes a lot of attention away from, uh, from the defense of the other team when he's playing. They, they beat St. Louis in six games. They beat Chicago in four games. That was... I mean, we were sitting... I remember when uh, um, you were doing the first round preview, yeah. and... The Blackhawks weren't a team that were supposed to get swept. No, they weren't. They weren't a team that was supposed, was to, supposed lose. to lose. And, the series, and, the predator, and the Predators were were you know not considered to be a semifinalist. I have to tell you, that's what makes I a think sport great. It's what makes a sport it's great. But, I, but but they are also they were playing great hockey at the end of mm -hmm. the year. They came into it playing well, 
And they've continued that, and they're getting scoring from different places. But their defense, Ryan Ellis, uh, P.K. Subban, Roman Yossi, those are the players to watch, I think, in this playoff because they're going to outdo, I think, the defense in terms of scoring of Anaheim. And if you can shut down their defense, you have to look with Anaheim. You have to look at Ryan Getzlaff. Mm -hmm. You have to look at Jakob Silverberg, who takes shots, uh, takes a lot of shots. I think that getting shots blocked and keeping Anaheim from, from shooting as much is going to be what, what Nashville tries to do. It worked for St. Louis, certainly in the last game. The, the, uh, there was not a lot of shooting. I think that's what's going to be the difference. Philip Forsberg, a player to watch. Uh, Any relation? Uh, yes. Uh, to Peterson? Yes, he, that, he, he's a relation. He's, uh, he's what we, they call a son. Oh, um, interesting. But, but, <laughs> but, uh, but I, I do think that, that when you watch um, Nashville play, you're going to see them try and lull Anaheim into their type of game. Ryan Getzlaff is a horse. He's second in the league in scoring right now in the mm -hmm. playoffs. He is uh, he's playing the best hockey I've ever seen him play, and I think it's important to note that because I think with Ricard Raquel and Corey Perry, who should come alive in a series like this where there's skating room on the outside rather than the inside because they're so good at the defense, mm -hmm. uh, that it's going to be good for Corey Perry too. Um, I think, so Anaheim was in the... Cup Finals last year? Am I making this up? No, no, no. You're they making were, that up. I'm uh, making this up. Was the, the Sharks and Penguins. The Sharks. Yeah. Sorry, wrong California team. Right, it's okay. We're getting close. Look, I, I, I people, just, I need a sidekick. I mean, Ed McMahon, we just he have didn't know everything about the guests that Johnny Carson did. It's what happens, right? So this is my little Andy Richter here. It's <laughs> fine. Um, <laughs> I don't uh, get to be uh, Guillermo from... Uh, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's <laughs> right. Well, we could, we could do that, too. Uh, but here's, here's what I was, uh, one of the things that I was following, two things I was following, actually, when it came to the other side of the bracket. For one, um, what do the Capitals do? And I, it's I know this really, sounds, it's tough. No, this no, it's hard. insane because I love the Twitter takes. I love immediate reaction. I think that there's a lot you can pick apart from it. But when people say, so what could you get for Alexander Ovechkin? Right. Which would be, to me, I don't know enough, but that would be insanity. You don't just give away that player. This is supposed but to be the this, year. This is supposed to be your Last year was... In a way, this was really supposed to be the year. This is when they traded for Kevin Shattenkirk at the at the deadline. Everybody thought that was going to be a great pickup Oof. on defense. He was not good in the playoffs, Shattenkirk, and he's going to be an expensive free agent. I think they let him go and they try and spend that money elsewhere that they that they would have had to spend on Shattenkirk. I think that you know Braden Holtby was great all year. He mm -hmm. was good in the playoffs. He wasn't amazing in the playoffs, and he saw an onslaught. I mean, you get scoring from so many people on Pittsburgh. We'll yes. have to talk about this when we talk about the Pittsburgh Ottawa. Series, course, but. but Jake Gensel leading the league in scoring. I nobody in the hockey world. I think you would you would find Jake Gensel was not a word a name that people knew. Even people who follow hockey uh, very closely. So those sorts of things that happen every year in the playoffs. There are always well, Justin Williams. There are always those type of people that score in the playoffs. But Jake Gensel is that this year. Um, I think the Caps have to make up their mind whether they try and keep this together and give it one more shot, win another President's Cup, or maybe <laughs> not win the President's Cup, and go farther in the playoffs. I think that overthinking it is maybe a problem for them. Yeah. Maybe they do spend the money. Maybe they do shore up their defensive scoring and their defense a little bit, uh, replace Shattenkirk with a younger pair of, of legs that, that can maybe, uh, not a younger pair, a, a, a more productive pair of legs that can do um, what he was unable to do and people People thought he would. He's going to be too expensive, I think, uh, for the Caps. But again, there's also the school of thought, which is fire Barry Trotz. He had two chances to get it done. Mm. Uh, don't sign Ovechkin. Get rid of Oshie and, and really start from scratch. I think Evgeny Kuznetsov is really a fantastic hockey player, and I think he's the kind of person they could look toward the future with. But again, uh, they have a big decision to make. Um, I do love the other Twitter take. Um, Fantastic breakdown. I think you know what you're talking about. Oh. Uh, what, just what? in general. Oh. I think you know what you're talking about. So oh. in, in, to that note. But in, in, in this note was uh, Alexander Ovechkin is the only uh, Russian in Washington without any influence in the White House. <laughs> was, That's true, right. Which yeah. I felt so bad because right. he's such a terrific talent and he's also more likable than Sidney Crosby. I'm talking about like what I see from the masses is that Sidney Crosby sometimes gets the crybaby label. He sometimes yeah. gets these little bit on the softer side label. Now, in terms of I mean, Wayne Gretzky Rob, got that, too. Did he really? Yeah, at times he got the soft he and the crybaby. He, he got the crybaby. He was pretty good at hockey. Sidney uh, Crosby, <laughs> I think, is the best hockey player in the world. I mean, I think when he's healthy, he's the best so, that there is. So I, I, you can't argue with that, whether you think he cries too much. If you're oh, a Penguins fan, that's um, one thing. 
I'm a oh, LeBron defender. Uh, yeah, who people oh, call oh, the oh, Ovechkin. I, I don't know that sport. Ovechkin. <laughs> um, Ovechkin is, and their playoffs should start soon. I'm guessing, right? The the NBA. Uh, they start next week. Do that good. Um, <laughs> Ovechkin is, you know, he's just not the player that Sidney Crosby is. They came into the league together, mm-hmm. and everybody has paired them together because they played against each other. They seemingly don't really like each other, but. I, they're not the same player. Ovechkin is a big scorer. He's a big shooter. He has the ability to ch- change a game very quickly. But the consistency, the speed, the passing, mm-hmm. the seeing the ice in the way that Crosby does, no, that, they're, they're not in the same breath on that. And so the Penguins won. The Penguins seem to have the firepower. They're playing in front of Marc-Andre Fleury, who came into the playoffs as the backup goalie for Pittsburgh. Murray got hurt in warm-ups before game one, pulled himself out of the game. Fleury came in, and then they beat Columbus in five games. They beat the Capitals in seven games. This has been an extraordinary playoff for him. He's also really popular, and I don't think that means very much, you know, on the ice, obviously, but the but guys the love playing in front of him. Hey, and, that's, that's, you know. a, that's, that, yeah, there's a way to command, at least in football, I mean, yeah. soccer, world, what is Francis's influence, right. sorry. Uh, the, some play, uh, some teams play better for their goalie. It's actually, here's a baseball reference, it's like the Andy Pettit effect. Right. If you remember, Andy Pettit on the Yankees, for those who follow baseball and hockey, uh, never was the ERA king, never right. was a 1.89 Kershaw-esque ERA guy. He actually was in the low fours to mid fours a lot of the time, but the Yankees would hit for him. Right. They'd come in and they'd give him nine But I would runs. argue that you can't try harder in baseball the way you can in hockey, in hockey or I would basketball agree with that. or football. It's I think baseball is a different, well, it's more like chess. Correlations, the they're... they're like possibly related. Yeah, no, no, not, for sure. Con- and and they're all and and you know the, all these guys. They won the cup last year. Mario Scoli. <laughs> they want to win the Stanley Cup no matter who's back there. But they're further incentivized, and that's part of the story. And the other thing is, Mark Andre Fleury will almost certainly not be a Penguin next year. So whenever they're eliminated, whatever the last Penguin game of the year is. He will likely be traded. I'm guessing he'll be traded to Buffalo um, because Jason Botterill became their general manager okay. yesterday. He's the assistant general manager in Pittsburgh. So likes Flurry yeah, wants to bring him Flurry over. Likes would want to bring him over, and they need a goaltender. So I think that would be something to look Good at. Fit. But 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 you have Ottawa, another team that's not spectacular, actually rather dull to watch. See, but they make the game like somehow. Like I like them against the Bruins series. Yeah. I thought that was a very was fun great. series. Yeah. And there's one player who. A friend of mine who's a, a big hockey fan, he does a small podcast, and he was telling me about uh, before the playoffs started, he said, watch out for Carlson. Watch yeah. out for Eric Carlson, Carlson is an unbelievable he, player. And his claim, and I've, I watched, I have no idea what to weigh this up against, but he said at times this postseason he's looked like the best player on the ice amongst everybody. Agreed. I would say, I would say that, that it would be between... Eric Carlson and Ryan Getzlaff as to who right now, if you gave an award for the MVP of the playoffs thus far, uh, or Pekka Rene in, in goal for, for Nashville. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, so I, 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 Eric Carlson's unbelievable. He's also been playing with a broken foot or a, or a, a hockey, broken heel or something. It's a, oh, this was a great Arm one. dangling from a thread. The, yeah, it's fine. Al, Alex Steen from St. Louis has played the, enti- played the entire playoffs with a broken foot. And then he missed a game. Because his he took a puck to the foot in the previous game, oh. the broken foot, and then he came back and he played the next game, the last game. So th- these guys are unbelievable in the playoffs. Eric Carlson changes the game when he plays, and he, he, that's what makes Ottawa. Without Eric Carlson, they're not there. Um, and I think that's gonna, you know, it's gonna be tough for him to carry this team against Pittsburgh. Craig Anderson and Mark Andre Fleury, those are, you know, not the two best goalies in hockey, mm-hmm. but they've gotten their teams to the semifinals. I think that you're going to see more goal scoring in this series than you might ordinarily expect from Ottawa, who played very, very tight defense and had a pretty easy time defending the Rangers at times. And when mm-hmm. when, when they let up against the Rangers, they were so resilient on offense that it, it, it became difficult. Jean-Gabriel Peugeot scoring seven goals, four in one game against the Rangers. <laughs> a player to watch in Ottawa, but you know they don't have the same kind of dazzling offense. It's what's being quarterback quarterback. You cannot take penalties. Uh, Pittsburgh can't take those penalties against Ottawa uh, because Carlson can can quarterback that power play. That said, I think Pittsburgh's going to win the series. I think they might win it decisively. I don't think it's going to be as interesting a series yeah. as the Western Conference Finals. I was, uh, 
I was gonna say the for one, I, I've learned just in in the betting like sense of this, just yeah. don't bet against the Penguins anymore. Right. Uh, just maybe yeah, no, not. You can't. It, it's silly too. And 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 when you see where they get their scoring, Brian Rust scoring in in the He's in got, the last this, game. Well, you have Jake Gensel. Then you also have uh, Malkin. Malkin's unbelievable. And so when you look at, at that, and we haven't even said Sidney Crosby, you know, <laughs> and, and there are players who haven't scored yet. Well, Connor say, Sheary hasn't really scored. In and, terms of even strength goals, which I think, I don't know, fun stat, it's yeah. Gensel's got seven, he's tied for first, Malkin five, and Rust five. That puts them as three of the top six. Yeah, that's right. So and in terms of like when you're playing without an advantage, right. five on five hockey. Is, is five on five hockey? Five yes, on five, five hockey. hockey. Five yeah. on five yeah. hockey. Yeah. Um, uh, but, you know, Ottawa anybody. is resilient, <laughs> and Ottawa doesn't stop playing, and Guy Boucher has coached that team mm -hmm. to respond, and that's what they did against Boston. That's what they've done against New York. They're going to have to respond against Pittsburgh because I, I think Pittsburgh's going to probably have some early leads in a few of these games. If Ottawa can get it, that's great. The first game they had the early lead was, it was, the last, was game uh, six against the Rangers where they won the series. Um, so if they get an early lead, that helps that team a lot. But I think that, you know, I think this is going to be a higher scoring series. And I think that um, that this that the Penguins will win. My prediction is the Penguins are going to sweep Ottawa. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, which I wasn't is sure because you said you were alluding a, to no, it. No, no. But but it's a tough conference final thing to do. But I think they're going to sweep. And I think that Nashville will win in six games against Anaheim. And then their goal well, we'll be play. back for the the hopeful we'll be back Nashville for the final. Versus, yeah, for, for the Nashville versus Pitt. We'll do a preview. Right. We'll do some obviously some games. And when we start talking about the Ottawa Anaheim Stanley Cup Finals, we can replay this part of the clip. That would too. be the best part of the clip, yeah, obviously. Of course it would, and yeah. I mean, and look, here's what I know. I I'm I have no I've never had a team in hockey, right? Okay. I just because of I grew up, my watched the sports my father watched, right. I never branched off with zero originality. Yeah. So he didn't like hockey. So we didn't watch hockey. Terrible. Bad parenting. Don't be like my right. dad. Um, but my point being was the one person who wanted to bring this up at the end that I was amazed by all through college when friends started like showing me hockey games and all this stuff was Pavel Datsuk. Yeah. And I started kind of rooting for the Red Wings, and now they think I am the reason that their playoff streak came to <laughs> That could be it. That could be it. Uh, Feel-good stories, right, in this playoff. Thing, you know, people to watch uh, for. Ron Hainsey, defenseman for Pittsburgh, mm. played 904 games without ever making the playoffs, the oh, longest streak of active him. NHLers, and he's now, uh, you know, playing in the conference finals. Craig Anderson's wife survived cancer, went through breast cancer treatment mm. all year long, has been inspiring for that team. Uh, and so if you're looking for, you know, the, the kind of the soft side of that sport, uh, that's an important thing to look at. P.K. Subban being traded from Montreal in a huge trade for Shea Weber, going to Nashville, trying to turn that, love PK franchi turn that franchise around. Yeah, P.K. Subban is hard not to love. I mean, the most charitable guy, the, 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 the most the fun playing, yeah. he should be the face of the league. Uh, and he um, is trying to take that franchise. They just won their, for the first time in 18 years, their second playoff series and now they're wow okay their way so there's a the there is they're, a lot of good storylines do any are. of these four teams have a yager yeah i mean a 45 year old player because you do know uh, this is true yamir yager started his professional hockey career before me. three months before i was born yeah i believe it and <laughs> three months before a lot of the players who were playing in these playoffs <laughs> were born too so i think uh, his career. it's kind of incredible right? why aren't you playing I, I play Sunday nights. So the, yeah. So. Where are you in plus minus? So uh, by the way, okay, can we just talk about this for a second? Yes, I would love to. You brought to. it up, and you didn't even know why you're bringing it up. Last Sunday, my team, the Honey Badgers, and the... Uh, <laughs> not it, the Kingbirds. Not the Kingbirds. The Honey Badgers. This is the team I play on. Uh, we won. We're not a good team. We're now <laughs> two. We're now two and zero. Oh. This oh. is we've started the season, the new season, the summer league. It starts. Uh, we're two and zero. Oh. Michael Shore scored five goals in a game. That, that gives me, for the last two seasons combined, five goals. <laughs> uh, but I scored five goals last Sunday. It was For the greatest feeling ever. It was the greatest feeling ever. No. But, you know, they were terrible. They were a new team. Oh. The goalie was terrible. Like, I scored the first goal. I was like, huh. This is going to be great. This is right? <laughs> and then everybody else scored on them. So it's like, nah, the goalie wasn't very good. But Are you thinking about so drafting Putin? Uh, we're thinking have you, about have it, yeah. you seen? By the way, that's my favorite. Uh, the last hockey thing I have to mention. Yeah. Because Michael Schur, the, the epic politics man. Um, did you see that they caught Putin coming out of the tunnel for a hockey game? Because he plays hockey, and they asked him about the Comey firing. Yeah. And just him in full hockey gear, I've seen him play right. hockey, seen the highlight tape. It's just, 
It, it's too perfect. No, it's, it is too You perfect. can't make this up. And you know, John Kerry plays hockey, the, the former Secretary of State, former Senator, but former nominee. And all oh, I, you know, people wanted him to win because they wanted Bush to lose, they wanted this, they wanted... I just wanted to have a hockey playing president in the White House. I thought that would be so cool. Uh, throw out the first puck instead of the first ball. That'll be, be great. Uh, so uh, <laughs> keep watching this playoffs. It's been unbelievable. So much overtime, so many good goals, so many comebacks. Um, you know, and, and if you're a basketball fan, listen, your playoffs are going to start in a couple of weeks. Uh, watch this until they do. Uh, I promise you'll enjoy it. Uh, no, you would. That's true. You will enjoy yeah. the play NHL playoffs. I promise. Uh, what the puck? I'm Michael Schroeder, Jason. Ruiz. Thank you.